Bro, think think about culturally how <laughs> before um like iPhone whatever, mm. selfies were that's all anyone did. And then they came out with the fucking the ultra great. Everyone's like, what if we did selfies in point five? Yeah, <laughs> no, we would just change the way they took pictures and shit. They're like, eh, maybe not that. I feel it was that, and also it's just like, why don't we just take a picture of our food instead? Yeah, look, look what I'm having for look what I'm having for lunch. <laughs> Bingo. My name is Stretch. This is the last time you mess with Stretch. Ah! Ah! Fade. Can I throw a uh, can I throw a wig on one episode and I can be my sister? Yeah. You have a sister? You're lying. No, I'm, I'm not even lying. You're not even lying. No. What is her name? Haley. Where does she live? Liberty, Missouri. You never told me this. You never asked. I guess, yeah, you're right. I, you, I haven't. You've never just asked, like, hey, do you have any siblings? You're right. That's actually a question I only realized recently is okay to ask. If you have a, if you have siblings? Yeah. Why is that okay to ask? Why, why did, you, did you think that it wasn't okay to ask somebody if they had siblings? For some reason, I've just always thought, like, don't ask about people's families. But I, that's me projecting into other people. That is, I mean, like, <clears throat> there's probably, like, a, a 0.5% chance that if you ask that, someone would be like, why would you even bring that up? Yeah. Like, like somebody, I used to, I knew three people from my high school that their, like, their brother or sister had died recently mm-hmm. like like a like in the context of it so i'm like hey do you have any brothers or sisters so like i used to kind of thing Damn. that's just that's awkward but usually everyone's just like yeah i don't like him yeah yeah you know i don't know i just i've trained myself to never ask about people's families well you know i think that you should open up a bit do you know about alina's family do you know about them at all i do i do but that that you know that was by force yeah well i mean nobody no, anybody on either spectrum of the relationship, whether you're a man or a woman or man, man, whatever woman, I'm not going to get in the, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> nobody likes, if, like, f- nobody likes being introduced to family. No. You know? Nobody does. You know why? Because it's just like, it's like looking at pictures of yourself or something. It's like, if you're not in them, no one cares. It's like that Dennis Reynolds quote. So it's like being introduced to new people and then we're supposed to act like you care about them. No one ever does. Yeah. You know? There will never be a time in my life where I truly, deeply love my wife's dad ever. <laughs> never. It'll never happen. <laughs> I don't care what he does or what he, anything. There'll never be a time. I'll have a layer of respect now, for the man. Now, I'll shake now, his hold hand. hold on. You don't think there's anything he could do to, uh, to, to inspire deep love from you for him? Like if nothing. It, if, he, if he gave me $3 million in gold, yes. What what if he said, Hunter, I want to fund whatever short film project you got floating up floating around in your head up to five hundred thousand dollars. I want to pay for it through and through. I I would say no. Because you know why? This is because one, if they're funding it feels like he wants something from me. And I don't like mm. that. This dog doesn't like to be on a leash, dude. Is See, what now 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 this goes back to the conversation we were having last night. You me- you messaged me late last night. And you said, hey, man, I'm, I'm having a conversation right now. It's true. I was. <laughs> this was this was actually a very deep rooted conversation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it seemed as such. And yeah. it was essentially Hunter posed a question to me. If I was offered a large sum of money, let's say three million dollars to mm-hmm. sell my likeness to a sexual media company to utilize my likeness in any porn from that point forward. Right. Would I do it? And I said no. And he thought I was crazy for that. I think I do. It's the ultimate get out of jail free card. You're Explain able. What do you mean by that? Because you're able to sit there. Because first off, one, who's that fucking tall, lanky ass rapper that got his fucking sex tape got put out there? He's a white dude. Young gravy. Young young gravy. He sat there and he had his sex tape. Whatever. If I had a deep fake contract, that I bought. I'd be like, it's fake. It's just fake. I get to have all the. I get to have all of. People could send me whatever. It doesn't. It's computer. It's computer generated. I don't care. Now it's probably different for a woman. You know, this is obviously coming from the perspective of a man. But I'm just yeah. saying that for me, 
I don't give, you could hog tie me up. You could have Harrison Ford, fuck me, do whatever, spit on me, come on me, do whatever the fuck you need to do. Because if I got that paycheck at the end of the day, at, I mean, I could, hey, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, it's a deep fake. It's a deep fake company. It's not real. And just wave it off. It's a get out of jail free car forever, but you still get that OnlyFans kind of revenue. That right. lump, that big lump sum, dude. Which yeah. also, I still don't understand anybody who makes good money monthly off OnlyFans. I yeah. really, I got, I tip the hat to them. Yeah. Because once you see a cock, balls, I mean, a pussy, asshole, tits, whatever, it's not going to change. You know, they're there. Yeah. So you see it once, you're pretty much one and done. Yeah. So for people to, you know, want to keep coming back and do, they're doing something right. I don't know. I got, I got to get. I need to figure out those nuances and and put it into my deep fake game for trying to sell my likeness. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's. I think psychologically, it's. Uh, I, I tip the hat because how many how many ways can you pretend to flick your bean? I mean, that has got to get old. The, the surely the the ratio is there a lot of men on OnlyFans? Like sh- I don't know. I imagine that like maybe through gay porn, there's probably there would be some like a market. But for straight men, I don't see a market for that. Of a what guy who's just like, it's like I mean, how many male porn stars do you know? That's like oh, oh like are, like women tuning in to just watch like a yeah 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 yeah, yeah. busy because yeah. every time I've ever heard that women always watch gay porn like men. That's what I've heard too. Yeah. So it's like straight whatever. It's like a weird fantasy thing, but I don't think they they have the same kind of fantasy aspect that men do. But no. then again, when man, I've had some bad experiences with, with porn, <laughs> like deplorable, deplorable shit where you you get done, you kind of get done, and the oysters just kind of lay in there, and you're just like, man, what am I doing? Yeah, cool. I watched I uh, watched like a seven year old woman get her back blown out, dude. Why? I don't Dude, know. That's crazy. I I've don't never, I've know. never hit that point in porn where I'm like, <laughs> it's like this is the bad thing. <laughs> this is the bad thing about needing to jack off and need and, and using Pornhub as like a scroll because it's all. It's this is the the one rule with Pornhub is you never go to page two. What, what, <laughs> yeah. Whatever is on page one, that's what you got, right? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Yeah. I, hold on. Have you seen that like that meme where it's just a screenshot of like the Pornhub pages and it's like four hundred twenty three or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, yeah. You're like you're like bro was down bad. That should that would be imagine scrolling through four hundred pages of Pornhub. <laughs> yeah, that's so fucking good. God, I that'd be so. I or to to finish my thought is because Sorry, when you're God. when you're, when you're on page one. Yeah. That that's your options. You're not going to go to page 2. It's just that selection. Mm-hmm. And there has been some days where you click on some videos and it's just it it's like jacking off is a lot like poison ivy. It's just like it's a very particular itch. So some yeah. days you get something and seeing a 7-year-old woman get her back blown out, that's just what you need. All right? That that's how Pooh Bear gets the honey out of the out of the jar. All right. I disagree. I oh, disagree. I, oh, bother. this Pooh Bear has never <laughs> pulled out the jar of seventy year old women getting their back blown Dude, out. Dude, you got it. You got to try it. Don't yummy. knock it. Don't knock it till you try it, bro. I tell you what. And you know what's weird is always it's always Russian, always Russian. Uh, Dushimarkul, whatever. That sounds more Middle Eastern. But the whole deal is like the. <laughs> I mean, it's it, and you know what's weird is that they, you know, they they take it like a champion. I mean, it's it's you don't think that a person that age could do that, but they can. Why is eighty percent of porn from Eastern Europe shot with a fucking <laughs> like a flashlight? It's like got this horrible vignette on it that it's it, like as a I remember being young, kind of picking on that pretty early and feeling massive. Like I I feel like I shouldn't watch this, you know. I, uh, one thing that I've noticed is because I think that every man, you know, if we have any women listen to this, just, this is a learning experience, but I think every guy goes into a very primal monkey state when they start jacking off. I mean, it just starts, yeah. your eyes kind of glaze over and you're just, mm, yeah. mm, you know, you're like, I mean, you're going straight chimp mode. Yeah. So there's been so many times where I've gotten that clarity afterwards <laughs> and I've laughed I'm I'm like laughing at the scenario in which this video is happening, or like the sounds people are making and stuff. Everything. It's very odd. It's just odd how your eyes glaze over, and until the deed is done, you like literally just can't process anything that's happening around you. Yeah, 
Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, ZocDoc! There's nothing worse than going to a doctor's appointment expecting to be at the center of attention, and then your doctor seems like they have better things to do, and better places to be. Come on, doc. Instead of listening to you intently, asking you how you feel, and helping you along, the doctor is checking the clock. On ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Surprise twists might work for podcasts, but maybe not for medical care. <laughs> With ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. <laughs> Boo! Just kidding. Choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. Go to ZocDoc.com slash stretch and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. Again, that's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash stretch. ZocDoc.com slash stretch. I was scrolling Twitter and there was a clip of, uh, I don't know, some, some girl uh, fucking this dude who had like a, you know, a fucking point. Oh, 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 one percent size penis, like just gigantic. <laughs> and I remember the, I, the caption was just something stupid, like, oh, nah, like with the crying, laughing emojis. <laughs> it's just like a five, it's just like a five second clip of the dude, like putting his penis inside her. And she's like, oh my God, I didn't think it was going to fit. And I just <laughs> cried laughing. You know? Oh, nah. Dude, I'm just. Oh, nah. nah. <laughs> I'm uh, just thinking, first of all, how, I, I don't know why, I, I, I was like empathetic, like empathetic for her at first, thinking like, how desensitized is she, that she's just looking at her own vagina like a separate entity, she's like, oh, wow, I didn't think it was going to go in there, it wasn't even like, this feels good, or oh, yeah, she was so nonchalant. Yeah, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like a part, of, it's a part of that weird script that you always have to have, yeah. which also, here's a couple of things, one is... You can tell when a dick has been in the porn game for a while. Same that you can tell. Can the, you? Oh, bro. Beat up. Definitely. Looks like, uh, <laughs> what the fuck? There's that story of, uh, who's that Who's that basketball player? Fucking uh, Will, Dennis remember? Rodman. Dennis Rodman. Uh, yeah. He's broke his dick like three times. So it probably looks like, you know, uh, just like a, a tree limb or whatever, you yeah. know, it's like all yeah. bent and stuff. You can kind of, I feel like you can kind of see that in porn with some people. The same way that, like, I feel like <laughs> people that have been in porn for a long time, women, I feel like the lips are very gray. <laughs> have you noticed that? No. <laughs> yeah, bro. Looks like a, looks like ground beef that got left out for like a day or two. It's just that haunting gray. That's what I call that. I'm going to start calling that now. Uh-oh, she has a haunting gray. <laughs> it's like Ichabod nah, man, Crane. That's experience. <laughs> nah, bro. That's like that's like when you cut down a tree and you see like a thousand rings on the inside. That's fucking This thing's that's, live forever. Yeah, that's a sequoia tree of a vagina. <laughs> yeah. That is fucking that is federally protected. Watch you your know, fucking tone, dude. I tell you walking the, through walking so, through the Yosemite of vagina <laughs> with the fucking nerve to be disrespectful. Yeah. This is a sacred get this is a state park. Yeah, yeah dude. The uh I tell you, one of my favorites, though, that's always gets a good laugh out of me is always the British taxi one. I've, yeah, yeah. I've only seen those, like, I, and, I, and I'm being so... A lot of memes. Right now. A lot of yeah. memes. No, I haven't engaged porn like that in a very, very long time. I just get all my porn through Twitter. Yeah, I see. that it's. I, I feel uncomfortable watching porn through Twitter. Well, no, I mean it like me, like what I just told you. Like it'll be like a ten second. Clip. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like I, I'm just saying. Like even then, I'm always like, huh, I scroll past I'm like, no. <laughs> really quick. But I could watch a guy who's sitting there and they do the whole setup and stuff, you know. <laughs> so where are you going, love? Whatever. And it's like just the deepest British accents. It's just she's just like, oh, I'm gonna go down to this museum today and meet my my friends at the Lou or whatever. No idea what they're saying. It somehow ends up to sex in the back seat. It's hilarious. I'll, it's just so funny. <laughs> also, I want to make a stance now too that dude, cut the blowjob scenes out of porn. Get it done. Yeah, you think? I it's, it's I time. don't find it enjoyable. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where I'm just like, what are we done? Yeah, really. 
I mean, wh- 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 why? It's it's always the longest part of the video. Yeah, I don't care for it. Yeah, it's always. Uh, I think you know what? I think it's lazy. <laughs> I, I think it's a trophy. I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I think it's just kind of lazy filmmaking. <laughs> yeah, they're tropey. <laughs> well, you know, it's got like the blowjob trope, and it's just like, come on. Yeah, I yeah, guess dude. like we can engage this way, but can we not just be a little more inspired? <laughs> <clears throat> what would you What would you replace it with then? You know what? I don't know. I don't. I don't think that we've come as uh, we as a society. We're not there yet. I don't know. You know no. what? What if they start? What if porn started off with just hugging? Yeah, like a little sensual. Try to tell me that isn't intimate, dude. A nice hug. You, don't you remember X Art? Do you remember that? No. They were like one of the first like 4K like porn uh, companies. Oh God. <clears throat> you you remember that shit? No, I don't. That, that's yeah. that's when I knew I was like. Maybe I was like a little bit on the spectrum or something. <laughs> I remember coming across those and then I would watch them and then the horny would just like deflate and I'm literally just <laughs> I it's so I, embarrassing, dude. Looking the, at light like the lighting. It's a very it's a very odd thing of the quality can't be too good. Yeah, the, porn there, should there, be a little gritty. There is no reason at all that we need four K clarity. Nah, man. Oh, in, in in porn. Nah, no, I disagree. I think I think we need a fucking <laughs> RE grade, like yeah, fucking RE. The same camera they shot Hereditary with. That's, that's yeah. what needs to be into the bedroom. Well, yeah, yeah, the, the, the more crystal clear you get, and also all they do is just blast light on it. So you see the girls fucking like razor burns on her pussy and shit for where she <laughs> just recently shaved and stuff. The guys, you see like all the ripples and his fucking taint. Looks like an HR Geiger painting. I mean, it just it it it's it's unnecessary. Give me 720p. I, I think we should be capped out at 720p in porn. Hey, hey, and that's a that's a good point. Everyone's handsome in 720. I'm telling you, it's Everyone's a nice handsome. pixelation blur. We all need a little yeah. pixelation blur. Yeah, that's that was the uh, that was the most that's the most upsetting thing I think about <laughs> iPhones. Like, stop oh, yeah. with the making yeah. them better. It's just like, too much. Yeah, especially yeah. even with selfies now. I don't think I think everybody in the world is finding out just how ugly they are with the amount of clarity that these fucking phones are giving us. Back in the day, if you had a fucking uh, what is it a, a like a, a cho- remember the chocolate bar phone? Yeah, you had a chocolate or you had a razor or a sidekick or something like that. Yeah, you look beautiful in every picture, bro. Think think about culturally how <laughs> before um, like iPhone whatever mm. selfies were that's all anyone did, and then they came out with the fucking. The ultra great. Everyone's like, "What if we did selfies in point five? Yeah, <laughs> <And> everyone, <laughs> everyone just changed the way they took pictures and shit. They're like, eh, "Maybe not that." I feel it was that. And also, it's just like, why don't we just take a picture of our food instead? Yeah, look, look what I'm having for <laughs> look what I'm having for lunch. <laughs> Brittany, you look great today. Nah, I'm okay. I think I just I'm gonna take a picture of this cheeseburger. <laughs> it's just it, it it definitely. I don't I don't see as many selfies. No man. No. I, I, I do you think that's just because in beginning of internet, no one really know what to post. So they just took pictures of themselves. Because back, because you're, I mean, you're right. Because back then, when it was shitty cameras, people were taking pictures of themselves all the time. That's all I ever saw. And then, like yeah. right around like iPhone four, that's when I started seeing everybody's meals, that kind yeah. of shit, or like bikes. Just something yeah. random. <laughs> they're like, I just don't want to take a picture of myself. Yeah, I that just... quality moved up a little bit, and everyone opened up the selfie, and they're like, Oh, wait a second. <laughs> It was the same kind of, I think it was the same kind of transition too when like the TVs came out and the clarity was like insane. Yeah. So like news anchors were like, you could see how fucking wrinkly and old they were and all the (laughs) makeup they had kicked on their face. And people were like, oh, this is uncanny. I don't want to see this. And people would like try to switch it back, but we've gone too far technologically. So now, uh, you know, they, everybody just has has to artificially make themselves beautiful. I do also think generally Mm. there is a certain amount of creativity that has been like, um, I don't know, like passed on to people. Like, I, I think there is a certain like, you know, I think people are like five or ten percent more creative about how they take pictures now. Oh, yeah. which is kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. But that, 
definitely. I also think everybody, people have found out the angles, dude. Tell yeah. you what, man, fat, fat men and women have found the perfect angle to where it makes their jaw not look totally frog-like. That's the have scariest. You, that's the scariest thing. Have you found it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, the whole thing is you go, you gotta go up a little bit and an angle, and then people sit there and they're always looking up. And the weird thing about fat people is we still don't know how to smile. So if you see a lot mm. of, fat, if you see a girl where you're like, I can't really tell, like a guy or a girl, you can't really tell what size they are. If they're not smiling, they're probably fat. <laughs> <laughs> Almost always, and usually the pictures are in black and white. I don't know yep. why they just kind of throw filters on still. It's like digital makeup. You kind of throw it on top of it. <clears throat> but yeah, every Midwestern woman who's just sitting there and it's like a selfie of themselves, it's just them like. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I uh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, I was, um, <clears throat> it's not really that interesting, but I, I was watching a short film last night before I passed out. Um, oh, fuck. I meant to. I meant to send it to you this morning so you could watch it. It was only 13 minutes. Is it was basically this short film about depression, uh, which on the surface always sounds like really corny. Yeah. Um, it was, it was actually it was, it was pretty moving. I, I, fuck, man, sorry. This is such a non conversation. What were you gonna say? Let me see if I can find this. Well, I guess just to add to that, it was really funny during the pandemic when I feel like there was like 150 YouTubers who all made short films about how sad they were that they were stuck inside. <laughs> and how their depression got to them and it was all these like youtubers who like had like you know they're they're millionaires and it's like them like walking around depressed in their mansions and stuff it was just like so tone deaf <laughs> they're like damn i'm sad you know, speaking of tone deaf you all you always bring up how mm. when people get good at one thing they think i'll be good at this thing yeah um and so kind of to that point so I, i've been working like rebuilding this hot laps car yeah. And I'm having this sort of conundrum, not conundrum, but I'm trying to figure out what to do with it because I'm built it and it's interesting. But I felt like that was like a little moment for me where I was a little bit of like, oh, I'm good at this, so I should be good at that. And then I went down this rabbit hole of car creators and I didn't really understand the like insane shit that car, like just straight up engineers are building and putting out on YouTube. Oh man. And so- that's like some interesting content that <clears throat> I don't visit it a lot just because that's not a huge interest of mine. But every video yeah. I've seen where it's like people swapping engines or doing anything weird like that, that takes like, that's some serious fucking knowledge of like, not only just like what works with cars and stuff, but also just like innovation and like <clears throat> engineering of like what can work inside. Cause you know, so, I mean, some engines are so big that's like, it's too heavy for frames or whatever. It's just. That's always just like a super interesting, but there's a lot. That's like such a huge community. That's like the fucking weirdest thing though, is that uh, all of these, all of these niche things have huge audiences. Like there's no, mm -hmm. I, th I really think that like right now is an awesome time to try. And like, if you really have just like a very lasered in focus of like, I love this, you could totally make content and you would be able to like probably survive off of like the <clears throat> ads and stuff or whatever. Like I feel like yeah. anybody could make anything they want and there's going to be like a large subsect of people who just love what you're making or whatever. Yeah. Which is crazy to think about the, uh, the channel that comes to my mind in that respect is grind hard plumbing company. I've always, uh, I've, I've referenced them every now and then, <clears throat> uh, just like on podcasts, but, uh, most like three weeks ago they converted, they built, you know, I, I don't know if it's like record proven yet, but it's like we built the world's fastest snow bike and they took this fucking 2005 like Hayabusa motorcycle. I don't know if you know what that is, mm. um, but yeah, they, they turned it into a snow bike and it's just like this crazy thing where it's a snow bike that sounds like a street bike. And <clears throat> even I think, I think Cletus McFarlane, he has like a, he took like a Honda engine that was like turbo boosted and he put it in a fucking like a dinghy boat. <laughs> That's cool. So, I'm saying all this to say the hot laps desk is my uh McMansion depressed creator video. You've like, been messing with that for a, a while though. You've been trying to make that work for a while. When when when, are, when do you think you're going to try to do more with that? The engineer has been working on it. He's like he's fucking awesome, but he's just been like tied up with other things. Um Yeah. Yeah. But it's almost done. Like he just added a fourth battery and they had to like swap the pulley system out so it can like drive the belt can like drive the wheels. But I think what I want to do is I think the car is not necessarily about speed. 
Um, it's more a spectacle. So I think if I do something with it, I'm going to start by just like, I think I'll just have to penny out and just fucking permit off a street, like a, a very public street and just do fucking like one minute interviews. And I think making the questions fun, not making them stupid, like gay son or thought daughter, you know? <laughs> Well, Although that what? is kind of funny. <laughs> if you did that and there was like high traffic going around. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think if you didn't do speed and you just had the desk just have like really good shocks, it'd be funny to see it like on a dirt track. That is V2. That's what I want to do for this, the second version. Just something funny, whatever. You could have some stuff that's like bolted down the desk, but other stuff's just like flying off and whatever. Yeah. That'd be yeah. funny. It's just about like the amount of money it would take to have that engineer be full time on this project would be insane. Uh. Yeah, it'd it'd be, it would be, be ridiculous. It would be fucking absolutely ridiculous. So I think that you're doing it at a good rate. And I think like once it's done too, you'll be, I mean, like you'll be off to the races. <laughs> yeah. See what, did, see what I did there? I like that. I like mm -hmm. that. Now I think, uh, yeah, I have some ideas on how to make the videos interesting, but it is a really tough concept. But anyway, figure it out after tour. It's no big deal. Hey guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode. Hello Fresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. April is Earth Month, and HelloFresh is always committed to a cleaner planet. On average, HelloFresh meals have a 31% lower carbon footprint than the same meals made from supermarket ingredients. Plus, nearly all HelloFresh packaging materials are curbside recyclable in most areas of the United States. Good food is too precious to waste. HelloFresh's pre-proportioned ingredients cut down on your food waste by at least 23% compared to grocery shopping, which is good for your wallet and the planet. And Noel, HelloFresh is not just for dinner. In fact, HelloFresh has you covered for every mealtime occasion, from snacks <laughs> and easy lunches to bring seasonal celebrations and festive gatherings. <laughs> I love using HelloFresh. The recipes are easy to follow and super delicious. It's so great to have a home-cooked meal without all the hassle of planning and shopping. The other day, I made the pineapple chicken tacos, mmm, and I really enjoyed it. Go to HelloFresh.com slash stretch50 and use code stretch50 for 50% off plus your first box ships free. That's HelloFresh.com slash stretch50 and use code stretch50 for 50% off plus your first box ships free. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. I think, uh... <clears throat> God, would it be so stupid too? I'm just, I guess I'm riffing here, but could you do something where you could set up, you had helmets, right? And you set up microphones to where you guys can talk to each other and it's recording. That's easy. And you're in a, uh, you're like on a go-kart track and you're racing and you're answering, the, you're asking the questions there. So it's like, but you're going fast, right? So you're sitting there, you're taking turns. So people are like, ah, or whatever. So yeah. it's like this kind of like sensory overload kind of thing. <clears throat> yeah. Or yeah. so if you're probably, and you would do so well, so you'd be so far ahead that you'd probably be very relaxed asking these questions, just taking the turns and stuff, and they would be like, <laughs> whatever. Get Obviously, very inexperienced people to be on like a very intense high tra high speed track would yeah. be really funny. Yeah, I've, I've, I had a, it's funny because I had a thought like, oh, would it be funny to do a video where I'm like training for like the Hot Laps debut mm. and... I'm like going around a track like on a like a high speed cart and they're holding up like cue cards and I have to like pontificate about whatever they're holding up like at the start finish line for the entire lap. But I like the idea of just bullying someone around a track and asking them questions. That's <laughs> I mean that's kinda that's what too. that's what always makes the most I mean like that is what hot ones is in a way. It's just yeah. like bullying a person with heat, you know, and yeah. it's just like they're totally uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't like it could it, that that could be something funny. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, dude. I don't fucking know. All I know is, speaking of racing, I saw the new Fast and Furious trailer, and I just... Oh, yeah. You didn't like that. No. No. I don't... It's crazy. I don't know how they've gotten from the first movie to now. It was When's the, the last most... time you watched the first movie? God. Years. I mean, years and years, probably. I've watched it at least three or four times in the last year. You, I mean, it's, I'm not the first movie is fun. I like the first two. I thought the first two were fine. And I tell you, when I was a kid, I really liked, uh, and I would probably still enjoy it as I liked Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. Yeah, no, I think that's the those three are totally they're fine, they're fun. Like, yeah, they're but classics. but back then it was just drag racing or it was just racing. 
Yeah. Right? They were just racing movies, like underground racing movies. Yeah. So I don't know what part, and I'm very ignorant on my Fast and Furious lore, but when the fuck did they start like doing government shit or whatever? It was like after... So Fast and Furious 1 did well. Too Fast, I think, was like somewhat commercially successful. And then I think they were ready to kill the concept, but they had still shot Tokyo Drift. Mm. So then Tokyo Drift was so commercially successful that they said, okay, we need to... It basically rebooted the entire franchise. Was it commercially successful or was the DVD sales just huge? Because I don't think that ever got... That, that didn't get a theatrical mm. release, did it? Tokyo Drift? Yeah, it did. Did it? Yeah, I oh, had yeah. No, I had no idea. Oh, yeah, dude. That, that man, fucking... Uh, Lil Bow Wow? Yeah, but just as like a car nerd in general, like when those movies would come out, I did like going to the release day because it was just all fucking all kinds of tuner heads. Just after the the, uh, the 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 Tokyo Drift movie always thought was funny. That has like one of the funniest beginnings to a movie where it's like the hot jock and it's just like whoever wins can have me. The girl, <laughs> yeah. some fucking butterface from like D like Des Moines, Iowa. And you're like, get the fuck out of here, dude. You're a, you're a, you're a participation ribbon. If anything, God, get the fuck out of here. And she said, who to you? No, she's not, I'm just saying she's just like, you can have me. It's like, wow, what a treat, dude. It's a fucking burden. <laughs> oh my the, God. the whole thing, though, is... She, he, but they're driving through that... Uh, that uh, Does she look like Ray Liotta? What? No, 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 no. Ray, Ray is much more handsome. But the the uh, <laughs> anyway, go ahead, go ahead, the, the the development, like they're going through like a neighborhood, whatever. But it's like sitting there and I, you know, they're driving through the neighborhood, whatever. Yeah. And he keeps he keeps looking over and I'm like, <sighs> and he kind of like looks back, whatever. And he fucking like flips his car ten times, and they're yeah. just kind of like, all right, you're too rowdy. You're going to Japan. <laughs> 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 and he gets there, and then yeah, Lil Bow Wow's just there. Thank God he immediately meets another person that speaks English in this yeah. foreign country. Yeah. But he's sitting there. Also, Lil Bow Wow, that Hulk car, that shit was so tight when I was a kid. So I was funny. Like, I was like, what a fucking stupid car, but it looks so. It wasn't it? Was it like a Kia Soul? What even? No, no, was no it, was, it was a Scion XB, I think. Oh, okay. I don't yeah. know why I thought, it was. Right, but a little box. But the uh, yeah, exactly, a little box car. But the, you know, everybody always remembers the deal. That's the DK. Yeah. Do you not know what DK means? Uh, I don't know. Donkey Kong. He's like, no, Drift King. <laughs> and you're like, whoa. <laughs> and then Vin Diesel pops out at the end. Yeah. I remember as a kid, I was like, the only reason I don't, I didn't even remember that Vin Diesel was in the first two. Yeah. So when I was a kid, that's crazy. I, I was stoked because I loved his really shit. That movie, it's not shitty. I mean, I don't. I haven't seen him forever. It probably is bad, but I remember I was such a huge fan of Chronicles of Riddick and Triple that, X. That's <laughs> that is so funny, dude. I know. Wow. I thought wow. Chronicles of Riddick. I was like, this is so fucking badass. <laughs> and then Triple uh, X. Uh, I remember that one was basically what Fast and Furious is now. Yeah, it is. Whatever. But yeah, I remember he like fucks that one Russian whore and he's like, <laughs> his like voice is sitting there and his voice is like super low. Let me see if I can get it to the deal real quick. Let me see. It's like, oh, my thing's not working. But he's just like, the things I do for my country. <laughs> and he just pipes this Russian whore walking around doing blow. I was like, what a, what a fucking, what a life Vin Diesel, dude. The, the only man, the only man to look like a buff thumb to just get tons of fucking pussy. <laughs> that's pretty much that's, that's Vin Diesel, dude. Have you seen that? I love that cringy interview with Vin Diesel where he's like, "Oh my God, you're so beautiful." She's like, "Okay, thanks." And he's like, "Oh yeah. my God, I can I thank you? On, can I thank you out on a dinner tonight?" Just creeping her on camera. Yeah, yeah. The whole time, God, you're so beautiful. His voice is so wild, bro. Yeah, he's I don't like, know how color, you what color panties you got on. I forgot what um what was like the famous quote from that interview I, oh was like, I have no idea i don't I, I didn't know that there was a, f a not like famous quote. but i thought there was no like I, a, I, I like a like a bit well i just remember because god did that come out that was probably the time like when vine i feel like i saw it on vine i can't remember yeah yeah and then i searched the whole interview on youtube or whatever but I, there was probably definitely like a clip like that line you're talking about that was like spread around a lot yeah yeah but yeah, he was just so he was just because she's just like, okay, yeah, thanks. So your movie's coming out. He's like, God, I can't even I can't even look at you. You're so goddamn fucking hot. 
what color panties you got on? She's like, so was it weird when Paul Walker and he's like, I don't care. Just kiss me already. <laughs> Just come over here and sit on my lap. Hey, I'm Santa. Have you been a good girl? Bro, I'm <laughs> I'm going to buy you a diamond necklace. <laughs> I wonder if there's a dude like behind the camera just feeling so uncomfortable that whole time. Oh <laughs> no, no, no. It's his boys and they're just like Yeah, dude, yeah, you're killing it, man. <laughs> and then he leaves that room, they're like, She's definitely feeling you. He's yeah, like, dude, Oh yeah. Dude, you killed that in there. <laughs> yeah, dude, Thanks. She wants you so bad. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> did you, did you ever follow his did. did you ever follow his beef with the rock? No, he had beef with the rock. I thought haven't they worked together for like fifteen years now? What the fuck? Yeah, no, dude. It, so, so back to the original thing. Fast, like the Fast series. I think, I think the government shit came in like the fourth edition, okay. and then from there it just became absurdist rea- like action. Films. Yeah, but that's whenever I feel like it became movies that were like, oh, these are grossing like a billion dollars each. Yeah, like yeah. I remember Fast Five. That was like a fucking huge movie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, but in that process, they brought on The Rock. And then there was this really corny period where they would like post um, images from like like BTS images and they would just diss each other publicly, you know, where The Rock would be like, ah, oh, great filming today. Unfortunately, not everyone can be professional. It's tough being the most professional guy in this business. And others on set just want to make it about their ego. And then Vin would be like, <laughs> There's no ego involved. There's, there. And it's just these two fucking bald guys going at it. But then that's why they made, I think, the Hobbs and Shaw spinoff. Oh, to get them away. To get them away. Yeah, like, I don't think they could work with each other. It no. was like, or they had planned it and they knew, like, The Rock's audience would draw it in. And then I think maybe Vin was like, Fuck that. This is my shit. You know what's weird is, yeah, I, I I don't care for The Rock at all. I don't like anything he's in. I don't think he's a, like, he's not fun to watch. Here's the thing about Arnold. He's trying to be the, it's like the Arnold thing. Arnold's yeah. like the mega superstar that was whatever, right? He's like the big action dork guy, yeah. whatever. But you know what? Arnold gets you in with a goofy accent, at least for me. Yeah. Like, you can't even understand what he's saying. Yeah. But then Arnold has just such such uh, charisma yeah the the rock to me always comes off as like just super fucking pompous and i just don't mm. like it i don't know I, and, and I also think... every movie he's in is just it's, it's terrible he, he has <laughs> never chosen a good movie like the, he's pretty much just like what's the highest bid this week conswell yeah. and it's like butler comes over and he's like well rock um we're going to do uh skyscraper because they offered you 150 million dollars for the Two days of production. He's like, good. That will go great for the tequila empire that I'm trying to shill every three seconds. I'm, I'm said, pulling up his whole dis- like. Oh, it's awful. Wh- as He's, you're doing this. He has never been in a good movie. He has not been in one good movie. Did, it's, you, uh, did you watch San Andreas? No. No. It's, why would I? No, no. It's terrible. I, no, it's 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 that's horrendous. The, that's the earthquake one, right? Yeah. That's the only one I've seen. Um... <clears throat> The oh, only, er, fuck, dude! He was in Doom. Sorry, I was so mad that they did. did you did you watch that? Yeah, that, which first off, there were some great actors in that movie, and he was fucking terrible in it. The Rock ruined that. Like, listen, it's a shitty, like, schlocky video game movie, whatever. You're t- you said yeah. Doom, right? Yeah, Doom. Yeah, yeah. And it's like at the end, they have that that fun first person thing, which I think they should have done more of. But he was fucking terrible in it. He was just so fucking. Oh God, it was the worst. No, I ruined remember it. it being bad. I think yeah. the only movie where you could say it was like maybe fun was Walking Tall, and that's just because like it, he was like he hadn't done any movies yet, so I still think maybe he got away with it. <laughs> I think well, some he, people. He, 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 it's like the only reason that Walking Tall, which I terrible, it's awful. I I'm yeah, not going to defend Walking yeah, Tall. No, it was bad. that's just that's just like WWE. He was like the tough guy. <clears throat> yeah. And he yeah. had like I think before that the only thing he had done was he was the Scorpion King. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. But you know what's weird is that he has no range. The thing no. going back to Arnold is Arnold can be the big bad tough guy, 
But motherfucker can do like crazy movies like Total Recall, great yep. movie. Yep. Or he can be or he can do twins with fucking Danny DeVito. That's an amazing movie, dude. Or Kindergarten Cop. Yes. So good. My hey. boy or Jingle All the Way. My boy Schwarzenegger has range, dude. dude and also he only picks good movies. I, I, I don't I can't think of a movie. Well, you know, I'm talking like in your prime, like superstar, not any of the later year bullshit, but all of Arnold's movies are fun to watch. No, they're all classics. I mean, bro, jingle all the way. <laughs> I remember watching that being thinking, damn, dad, you got to step it up. This is a fucking cool ass dad. <laughs> I I love that movie. I, I cannot. I That is the most sympathetic role Arnold has ever played in his yeah. wife, his wife, ungrateful. His son is the worst child ever. <laughs> I was so fucking pissed. And Jingle All the Way, it starts off, and you know, there's the whole montage of Arnold being like, you're my number one customer. Yeah. It's the busiest time of year. He's making ends meet, making bread for the family, right? They're sitting there, and he's like, I got to go to Jamie. That's his son's name. I got to go to Jamie's karate class. He, It's a belt ceremony. And he's sitting there, and, he, and he, they're like, Aren't, you're never going to make it, whatever, and his wife bitches at him. <laughs> yes, Howard, you said you'd be home. I'm coming, I swear. I'm going to make it. And it goes, and it cuts to the ceremony, right? Jamie's sitting there coming out. Motherfucker's getting his yellow belt. I know. It's the second belt. It's not, it's like, you haven't done any, like, fuck you. And, oh my God, Phil Hartman plays, that's like, God, Phil Hartman is so fucking good in that. It's like the, yeah. the, the 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 like the guy that's fucking all of these like suburban moms. Yeah, they're like he's like, now nah, I'm gonna come over and fix your plumbing tomorrow. All right, and like God, you're such a you're such a savior. He's like, okay, calm, all right, calm down. But he wants the bell of the ball. He wants Arnold Schwarzenegger's wife. So he's over there and yeah, he's just uh, hanging out with her all day. There's that great part where he's like, you know, he answers his phone. He's like, he's like, what are you doing in my house? He's like, oh, Howard, your wife's cookies, they taste so good. And he's like, put my wife's cookies down. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dude. but anyway, sorry, not to, to, the last last thing I'll say is in when I was a kid, I was like, this little ungrateful son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. He goes home and the kid's all fucking moody because, oh, his dad missed his yellow belt ceremony, right? So Arnold goes upstairs, he's like, hey, Jamie, I heard you were awesome today. Yeah. He's like, die, you know, come on, do some tricks for me. You go in his room, his room is this, ma I mean, it's the, the master bedroom of the whole house. Dude, it's, Huge. The, it's the sickest room for a kid. There's fucking Captain America painted on the wall, fucking Spider-Man. The kid has everything he could ever want. He's like, you're never there for me, Dad. <laughs> it's like, how about you do this, Jamie? How about you take that fucking yellow belt, you go in your closet, and you hang yourself, dude? You little ungrateful piece of shit. He's like, the only thing you can do is buy back my love with a Turbo Man action figure. Ungrateful. Man. The worst. <laughs> and then, yeah, and then he has to go on this fucking quest to get this unbelievably popular toy. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That's yeah. such a good That's such a good movie, man. Even I love Sinbad, too. Sinbad's so fucking good in that movie. Yeah, well, I was going to say, you're talking about picking good movies, like, even if you take this three, if you take the three-year stint right here from Junior, okay? Yeah, yeah. He does Junior, Eraser, Jingle All the Way, and then Batman and Robin, and he kills it in all four. Oh, yeah. Even it, if the movie is bad, he is still amazing. Yeah. Batman and Robin is... I mean, like, George Clooney is, like, probably the worst Batman. He's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> the the, the movie, Women the in their 50s are going to be really fucking pissed that you said like, that. what? No! Freaking out. The uh, That movie is so stupid. I mean, I love it. I love that movie. That was, like, such a huge part of my childhood. It has, like, some of the great visuals and stuff, but the movie itself is just so stupid. Yeah, but, it's bad. But they have him just painted up. I mean, that motherfucker, Arnold probably sat in makeup for like four hours every shoot. Yeah. Painting his ass silver with glitter and all sorts of shit. Just for him to go, I miss the freeze. <laughs> like oh, yeah. well, he's, like, he's like, he does this. He's like, what killed the dinosaurs? <laughs> the Ice Age. Yeah. And he shoots the fucking gun. <laughs> Yeah, but he kills it. He's just great. He's the fucking best. The Rock will never touch what Arnold has ever built. And that's always the, you know what's the thing about The Rock, too, that I think also just puts a sour taste in my mouth? It's Logan Paul's always like, I want to be the biggest entertainer in the world. Yeah. I want to be the biggest entertainer in the world like The Rock. 
It's like, who in the right mind says that The Rock is the most entertaining person in the world? It's like, uh, just because you sign big contracts and you're in, like, like, you're, no, I don't know. I mean, like, I understand what he's saying, but I'm like, it's just so fucking stupid. I want to be the biggest entertainer. My role model is The Rock. I love him. Two things there. One, it's actually interesting that you bring this up because, like, talking about Arnold's range and stuff, because I was actually browsing a, a Reddit thread, like, two weeks ago, talking about, like, uh, can we finally admit that Arnold is what Stallone wishes he was or something? And, hmm. you know, it, it all kind of ties in. And and people were comparing, like, movies, and everyone in the thread was agreeing, yeah, Arnold just does have absurd range. It's also interesting, is unintentionally, I came across this clip today, because I guess, I don't know, there's, like, a, a large amount of people on TikTok that, like, actively hate on The Rock. and Good. And this dude... This dude brought up a clip of um, Denzel Washington. He wasn't talking about The Rock, but like definitely <laughs> it's probably one of the five people he was thinking of when he said this. But he was basically saying it's good as an actor, if you're a great actor, to kind of like go away for a little bit and like leave the people like wanting more. And if you're yeah. always in every film, then you just have a brand, but you're not known for being a good actor. Yeah, it's and- the Kevin Hart thing. It's like the same yeah. thing with The Rock and Kevin Hart. You're if mm-hmm. you're in everything always, you're gonna people are gonna get burnt out so quick. Yeah. As you said, Denzel Washington said that. Yeah. Man, I love that era of Denzel being on top. That was some oh, of the dude. Man on Fire. Like one of my favorite movies ever. I fucking yeah. love Man on Fire. Training Day, so good. American Gangster is great. I fucking love all those movies, man. I mean, he he just what a. Uh... It really is crazy because obviously when when we're watching these guys like as as kids and whatever, you can contextualize like, oh, this guy's like a great performer. Like, oh, I like, you know, I like him in films. Yeah. But it's the people that have a certain kind of swagger. Like I think like Denzel Washington to me has the same kind of like swagger and like, oh, this is like just class is like a fucking like. Jo- like John Wayne or like a mm-hmm. fucking like Humphrey, like a classic dude where you're just like, yeah. put him in the movie and it's just like, it's he's probably gonna, it's just like gonna elevate it just because of like the kind of like control he has over stuff. It really is wild because even I think on paper, a movie like Equalizer sounds really fucking dumb. Yeah, and if yeah. someone else did it, I think that movie would have been really stupid. But yeah, I they were able to make two of them and I think it's a thousand percent because of Denzel's performing ability. It's just, it's crazy. I, I think the thing too is like the movie can be dumb. Like a movie doesn't have, like, I don't need like a serious, crazy, sure, awesome movie. The thing is, like, is it entertaining? And does like the actors do that? Can they yeah. like hold the performance? And I think that that's what Denzel Washington does. I mean, like, um, yeah, sorry, that's God. what I mean by dumb. Like, yeah, when, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah. the fucking, uh, but even his range is crazy too, because he can play a bad, bad motherfucker, or he can be remember the Titans yeah. kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I just love that range. Also, I just, I, I, I just, I'm very biased. I just love him. I think he's a great actor. I love, I love uh, just his per- his presence on screen is fun. He was in this mm-hmm. terrible, really stupid, not terrible, but it's like a really stupid movie called Book of Eli. Have you heard of that? Oh yeah, yeah. I remember th- when that movie came out and people were shitting on it. I, had, I had like this point of pride where I'm like. It's the fucking, the script is bad, dude. Leave Denzel alone. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's just the fucking script. <laughs> but that movie still, I was like, I, I was like, I, you know, the movie was pretty stupid, but Gary Oldman and Denzel Washington killed it. Stop, man. Those guys love together. It. I love uh, I love Gary Oldman, too. Yeah. Gary Oldman. Gary Oldman's been in a lot of crazy movies that are great. You ever see Fifth Element? Bro, yeah, we've man. I feel like we've gone extensively into Fifth Element. Fucking have we? Um, oh shit! Yeah. I just that's a movie too, which I can't Fucking, remember. Is is uh, Chris Tucker? Is he was he one of the, yes. like he was on he was on Epstein's plane a, a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think he I think he might have done some fishy things. But yeah, he was uh yeah he was like that androgynous. Yeah, he's radio awesome. Host. I love him in that movie. He's so yeah. f- it's like such a good role, super flam- flamboyant with that fucking crazy outfit and the hair. That's like yeah, super good. I mean that movie uh is like, you know, to me it's like uh, gender fluid Star Wars. <laughs> yeah, I, I think like today it's if that movie was released today, 
I feel like people would be like, God, this is the sign of the times. Yeah, they'd be shitting on it. They'd be, they'd yeah, yeah, they, they, they would think it, all that. They would think it's some woke garbage, but that movie just was so fucking like weird and ahead of its time. Yeah. It's so weird that that. I mean, they got a lot of big names, like Bruce Willis being the lead. You know, that was huge for like a '90s movie or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. That's a you know, you know, it's a really fun one. I, I always. Episode. Whenever people are like, I've never seen that movie, I'm like, you really got to give it a chance. It's it's a lot of fun. I, yeah. Oh, Alina had never seen Fifth Element, and I made her sit down and watch it, and she was sitting there going, this movie is crazy. I'm like, yeah, this is completely... Yeah, yeah. It is, I don't... At the time, I felt like that movie was massive, but somehow it escaped a lot of people, uh, at least young people in that era. Yeah, I don't know. I think that there was a lot of weird sci-fi shit in the 90s. I also think that like Will Smith, a lot of Will Smith movies overshadowed. So I think like Men in Black uh, overshadowed true, true, it. True, yeah. And I think Independence Day overshadowed it just in terms yeah. of like weird sci-fi shit. So I think I just don't think I think it was like just a little too weird and they didn't have the big name. Like like yeah, Will Smith was just so fucking dominant. In you, the 90s. you know, you know People, if you're listening now, you you have to know that Fifth Element is solid because Hunter does not like sci-fi. I don't. I don't <laughs> like sci-fi. To like the That's movie. the same thing too. I and I I hate Will Smith. I don't respect him anymore after the Chris Rock thing. I will say yeah. that openly. I think he's such a fucking pussy for that. But I will say that Men in Black, fantastic movie. Love Men in Black, <laughs> yeah, dude. I love Men in Black. I also like Pursuit of Happiness. Um, I've never watched Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah, it's okay. You could, you could probably skip it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's, wait, it's, it's, it's okay. It's like, the, it's like Oscar bait, that kind of shit. Yeah. Wait, real quick. What's the quote from the fucking bug guy in Men in Black? He's like, you mean like this? Yeah, Fuck. and he pulls his face back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <whatever>. yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he, keeps, he keeps sitting there, and he gets more and more, uh, he's like, put more sugar in it. Just yeah, that's all what the it fucking is. Fucking sugar in the water. Yeah, and he drinks it. That movie is, scared me as a kid. I was fucking scared as, from Men in Black as a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they, then they, then they brought. I think I was actually, I was framed for it because I think I saw the music video and the music before the film. Like I don't think I got to see Men in Black right when it came out. <clears throat> so what was the music in the? Was there a specific? Did Will Smith? Remember? Yeah, song? Will he made that song? Here come the men. The men in black. black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, so that's I, a bop. That's a good one. So Here I saw come the men you know, in black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All yeah. those clips of the fucking like little cockroaches yeah, sh- dancing. Then the fucking car going around the sub, like the tunnel, yeah. whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that now. Yeah, yeah. So then when I went to see the movie, I think I had that tone of it. So. It definitely made the fucking scary like that guy, yeah, a yeah. lot more palatable. Because I'm like, oh no, it's it's for fun. Yeah, yeah, I I saw it and it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> I remember that and the 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 him like signing up for the like to be in the program. Those are like mm-hmm. the two big memorable parts, like the egg chairs and he sits there and he has to like yeah. pull the thing over and he's like right trying to like ride on the wall and stuff. And then there's that part where they're all shooting the aliens in that yeah. target arena. And he yeah. just shoots. He shoots the little girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, I mean, it's fucking weird. These people are just walking around like aliens. Just, it's like, what's who's this crazy little bitch just walking around this like alien infested city? I thought that was funny. That's a, yeah, that's a good one. Men in Black also did just such a great job. I think. Um, I think sci-fi is easy to fuck up, and I think whoever was like the prop designer, like they did such a good job with the guns. The guns were so. So stupid, but so fun. It's like yeah, a, they were like interesting looking. It feels like an old like sixties like uh, like a Star Trek thing or something. Yeah, or, like, or even like fifties like weird like thing from another world or something where it's like kind of like the oval shape and it has like the weird like little antennas out and you know you know yeah. what I mean like lights and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah it all that stuff. Like a really submarine fun. on a fucking yeah, 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 exactly a submarine <laughs> with like a handle and a trigger. That's what yeah. it looks like. Yeah, that shit's super fun though. Yeah, that, yeah, that stuff's really good. Yeah, I, I don't know why I'm so... I still haven't seen Dune, the newest Dune. My buddy is big into sci-fi and stuff, and I still haven't seen Dune. And I know that it's like, you know, people are like, oh, it's not worth the hype or whatever, but I haven't seen a lot of new age sci-fi stuff just because I I just can't get into it. Like, I haven't even seen uh, Blade Runner 2049 or whatever. Uh, I liked I liked Dune. Um, I, I, feel I, enjoyed, the- I enjoyed Blade <clears throat> Runner. I, I Dune, to me, it's like... It's good, but uh, 
you know, I don't, I'm sure you've heard this, but it's like, it's just kind of like the world builder and like the second one is like where all the action really happens. Dune was almost like if someone took the Warhammer lore and put it in a YouTube video and that was something I could play in the background to learn about Warhammer. Uh, it's like good just fodder. Like, you, like you'd be like, you would like to just have it be playing in the background just like while you're doing something else. Yeah, and I think like they do an interesting job of like kind of establishing characters. So yeah, it's like what they do with that could be really cool. I always like whenever movies have a theme that's like very simple, but they use sci-fi to elevate it. Like I'd say probably my favorite, which I don't know how much you can consider this a sci-fi movie, but I'd say probably my favorite sci-fi film of the last, I mean, probably, probably like, you know, within like recent years of like when I was in college and stuff, I liked Ex Machina a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and I would consider that a sci-fi film, but I just like how they use, it's like a very small element and like a real world kind of mm -hmm. thing, but it like, it makes it more fantastical. It almost feels like a fantasy film to me in a weird way, but that's like, I love that movie. I like Alex Garland stuff a lot though, too. I think Alex Garland is rad. I really, I didn't, well, a Annihilator, I thought was okay. I know a lot of people love, or Annihilation, a lot of people like that movie, but I thought Men was great. That's like the weird, yeah. ambiguous shit that I like. Yeah. <clears throat> weird art house shit that people are just like, God, this shit didn't make any fucking sense. It was so boring. Yeah. I, I actually, I, I like one of, highlight your point about using sci-fi to elevate because that is such a it is such a thing or like it i think that's why sci-fi comes across so corny a lot of the time is they all open on like some fucking little girl talking about the new world is dark and scary <laughs> yeah you know it's always just yeah really on the fucking nose yeah but some people like that aesthetic man like if you if you yeah. flipped it and if it wasn't like an elf girl mm-hmm the orcs have been rampaging the that's land. That's true. Yeah, that's I, really I, true. I, I'd be all in. <laughs> that's I fair. would be like, I'd be like, oh my god, hell yeah, let's get the, let's. I want to get in this. And to be fair, I, I'm fucking, um, I love sci-fi. So you know, um, who also loves sci-fi? We should do an episode with him, uh, Brian Jordan Alvarez. He so his, good. His like favorite film of all time is like Prometheus. That's a good one too. I mean, even him and Megan. Megan's like a sci-fi horror film. He was fucking yeah. awesome in that. Yeah, he's uh just a quick shout out to him. He's a very brilliant writer. Mm -hmm. He's he's very good at improv, but also he had a series back on YouTube that I watched because I thoroughly enjoyed his skit that he did back in. I mean, I think it said it was uploaded in 2015. I don't know how true that is, but it's the one where it's what gay guys uh, do when they see each other when no one else is around. And it's just yeah. like skit in the stairwell. Yeah. Very funny and well shot and stuff. But he also wrote like a mini series with yeah. him and, and some other actors and stuff. And it was yeah. very well done. Yeah. Oh, no, nah, man. He he is. He's like, man, he, not only is he like super talented, but he's just like a good dude. Like you could. That's, that, that's always nice to hear. I always hate whenever you. You see somebody who's like talented and you like respect their work and you just like don't mesh or you're just yeah. like, it's like, it's like a very awkward, like you're like, eh, he's kind of a dick or something. Uh, yeah. Brian is like, he's just so welcoming and he's always just down for whatever. Like even, um, even when I like impersonated his character from TikTok, I was, I, I spoke with him like off camera and I was saying, yeah, I wanted to do like a little parody of it, but uh, I, I never called it out cause like it's your thing. And like, I just, you know, I don't even want to like broach it and just like for weeks he was like dude just do it just like just make i don't care like he was like basically tag the joke it, what's mine is yours i'm not precious like go for it and it was just it was just like kind of cool that no part of him even with something like that that's like you know and maybe that's probably because he's just like secure in his talent kind of thing but um yeah i don't know he's just a uh, just super welcoming guy like i think at some point he'd be a, a, just a dope guy to work with even like in a writing capacity just um uh, you know, if we had an idea, if we wanted to like chew on like a bigger project, I'm, I know like he'd be down to just collaborate. Yeah. I mean, so those things, I hope that <clears throat> the success of Megan and stuff too, I hope that that gets him more opportunities as well. Yeah, definitely. I like was that. saying that thing feels so ripe for just a number two, even if it's like, Oh man, it, they, they did a very good job of which the only, 
the actor who played the CEO of the company, mm -hmm. the Asian guy, he's yeah. terrible, <laughs> awful, awful actor. But like the movie was the movie. Like I, I think that they leaned into the comedy in a good way. Yeah, because if you would, if you would have played that too straight, it would have been very corny. Like yeah, I, I think they did a good job about making it. Like it has some moments where you're like, oh fuck, this little bitch is gonna fuck someone up. But it also there's so many moments where you're just like laughing and it feels like very cartoony, cheesy. It's fun. So yeah, man. I could That's, see it being. Uh, I could see it being like a just like a little fucking series or like a you know a franchise of like Megans, multiple Megans out in the world or whatever. Yeah, bro. They uh, Gen Z doesn't realize that's that's their Gremlins, dude. <laughs> I don't know if it's I don't know if it's as good as fucking Gremlins, but nah. you know it's uh, nah. you know it's uh, I would say it's this generation's like Chucky. Is what yeah, yeah, yeah. That's definitely more accurate. Way more accurate. It has it has that kind of vibe for sure. Yeah, Gremlins. I don't. Yeah, there's there's only one Gremlins. That's true. Like that shit's yeah. A Top horror Christmas classic, dude. Yes. Um, yes, ladies yes. and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in to another riveting episode of Stretch and Fade. Um, we'll see you very soon with another episode. Leave a comment if there's a film you want us to check out or dive into. Um, we we always uh. We're always game to watch some some of your interests and we can uh yeah tie that into the show yeah i always love seeing if people have movie recommends please and nothing's I, off limits we'll watch sex in the city uh movie two the the sequel to something like skin of rink to whatever so let us know yeah and watch the movies yourself yeah yeah definitely yeah go watch movies all right everybody thanks for tuning in bye